Watchman Nee's quotes. Good is not always God's will, but God's will is always good. A drowning man cannot be saved until he is utterly exhausted and ceases to make the slightest effort to save himself. When one tries to increase his knowledge by doing mental gymnastics over books without waiting upon God and looking to the guidance of the Holy Spirit, his soul is plainly in full swing. This will deplete his spiritual life. Because the fall of man was occasioned by seeking knowledge, God uses the foolishness of the cross to destroy the wisdom of the wise. Our old history ends with the cross, our new history begins with the resurrection. How true it is that without the guidance of the Holy Spirit intellect not only is undependable but also extremely dangerous, because it often confuses the issue of right and wrong. I do not consecrate myself to be a missionary or a preacher. I consecrate myself to God to do His will where I am, be it in school, office, or kitchen, or wherever He may, in His wisdom, sent me. Watchman Nay, The Normal Christian Life. The Spirit is both a builder and a dweller. He cannot dwell where He has not built, He builds to dwell and dwells in only what He has built. How dangerous a master human emotion is. Lord, I am willing to break my heart that I might satisfy thy heart. Man's thought is always of the punishment that will come to him if he sins. God's thought is always of the glory man will miss if he sins. God's purpose for redemption is glory, glory, glory. All satanic works are performed from the outside inward, all divine works from the inside outward. God will not give me humility, or patience, or holiness, or love as separate investments of His grace. He has given only one gift to meet our need, His Son Christ Jesus. Genuine spiritual knowledge lies not in wonderful and mysterious thoughts but in actual spiritual experience through union of the believer's life with truth. Do you know, my friends, that the spirit within you is very God? Oh that our eyes were open to see the greatness of God's gift. Oh that we might realize the vastness of the resources secreted in our own hearts. I could shout with joy as I think, the spirit who dwells within me is no mere influence, but a living person, he is very God. The infinite God is within my heart. I am at a loss to convey to you the blessedness of this discovery, that the Holy Spirit dwelling within my heart is a person. It is a great thing when I discover I am no longer my own but his. If the ten shillings in my pocket belong to me, then I have full authority over them. But if they belong to another who has committed them to me in trust, then I cannot buy what I please with them, and I dare not lose them. Real Christian life begins with knowing this. He who is able to accept everything gladly from the Lord, including darkness, dryness, flatness, and completely disregard self is he who lives for him. We must not pay attention just to reading and studying. Rather, we should ask if we are open before the Lord. If we do not have an unveiled face, the glory of the Lord will not shine on us. If our heart is not open to God, God cannot give us any light. I must first have the sense of God's possession of me before I can have the sense of His presence with me. We must be brought to a place where, naturally gifted though we may be, we dare not speak except in conscious and continual dependence on Him. If we throw ourselves open to God, He will reveal. The trouble comes when we have closed areas, locked and barred places in our hearts, where we think, with pride, that we are right. Every true work is not done to the poor. Every true work is done to me.
attempting to follow him without denying the self is the root of all failures. Do we impress people with ourselves, or with the Lord? Do we draw people to our teaching, or to the Lord? This is genuinely vital. It determines the value of all our work and labor. It is so easy to become more attached to the gifts of God than to the giver, and even, I should add, to the work of God than to God himself. Bible reading and prayer are not wrong, and God forbid that we should suggest that they are. But it is wrong to trust even in them for victory. Our help is in him who is the object of that reading and prayer. Our trust must be in Christ alone. The Christian life from start to finish is based upon this principle of utter dependence upon the Lord Jesus. Lord, I do not know fully what the value of the blood is, but I know that the blood has satisfied thee, so the blood is enough for me, and it is my only plea. God must bring us to a point I cannot tell you how it will be, but he will do it where, through a deep and dark experience, our natural power is touched and fundamentally weakened, so that we no longer dare trust ourselves. But Christianity is a queer business. If at the outset we try to do anything, we get nothing, if we seek to attain something, we miss everything. For Christianity begins not with a big do, but with a big done. It is not a matter of how many loaves we have in our hands, but whether or not God has blessed them. The more spiritual a child of God becomes, the more conscious he is of the significance of walking according to the Spirit and the dangers of walking according to the flesh. The soul seeks to retain its authority and move independently, while the Spirit strives to possess and master everything for the maintenance of God's authority. The reason for so many defeats in the spiritual realm is because this sector of the soul has not been dealt with drastically. Prayer does not alter that which God has determined, it never changes anything. It merely achieves what he has already foreordained. The daily life of the Christian can be summed up in one word, receive. We recognize already that regeneration of the spirit is the paramount need of man. Here is invariably a spiritual fact, our spirit is released according to the degree of our brokenness. How pitiful it must be when the flesh gains dominion. Sin has slain the spirit. Only those who are subject to authority can be authority.